right now it's time to delve into the issue of partisan politics in basic schools uh, following the punishment meted out to the head teacher of Tempani SHS. Uh, Roland Walker is now with the PRO of the Education Ministry, Mr. Vincent Echo Asifwa. Roland, I'm sure you can hear us. Take it away. Happened uh, across the fields and also uh, near or within various schools, especially during election years. Well, just recently, we had um, a personality in the end who was contesting one of the positions of national executive, but also had been uh, uh, an executive himself currently. Um, and Akamba had had education service, but also speaking consistently about what role the political parties should be playing and how their interaction should be with young people. Well, that's why we have the PRO for the Ghana, um, Ghana's own Ministry of uh, Education. And uh, Vincent Ekowa Sefa is here with me. Good morning to you, Vincent. What really transpired for us to be where we are today, the people who are surely told with their blood, for us to have this nation as where we are today. And these are the things that we are supposed to be teaching our children, not to disrespect the elderly, not to disrespect the office of the president, not to disrespect state agencies or whatever you. And these are things that we should not be allowing in our various senior high school well, at these well, early stages. Well, Vincent, we have rules. We have rules and of course... Um, it will look like we haven't followed the rules over the years, is that it? Wrong is wrong. Okay. The fact that it happened in 2016 and 2015 and a crack was not whipped doesn't mean that the same crack cannot be whipped. Let me put on record that GES or Ghana Education, Education Service Ministry of Education, Education will crack the whip for any headmaster who will allow such indoctrination to go on. Let me use myself as, as an example. I am a partisan Catholic. From my birth up to now, Everything that I have done with my life and everything is Catholicism, and that is what my parents taught me. And so if I'm being sent to a school at the age of 14, 15, and you allow a headmaster to indoctrinate me with the philosophies, or as it were, with the belief or the dogma of uh, Hindu, my parents is not going to be happy. They will not be happy. And so religious indoctrination or whatsoever should not be allowed in our various schools because every parent or every child in his own right has to make his or her decision as to where his philosophies or ideologies should go. It should not be done under duress or undue influence. But when we transition, transition into, into some, some of the, the cases or the case in points, which involves the head of the Timpani uh, Senior High School, we're told that uh, he's been written to um, to be suspended. Absolutely. And then investigations will follow. Absolutely. And um, uh, by, by what, what procedure is that done? Is it because there's been a breach? Absolutely. The breach is that he should not have allowed Joshua Akamba in his school to um, let this unfortunate incident happen where he will have to even ask the children or the senior high school students and say, when you are given the opportunity in 2020, are you going to vote for John Mahama? That undue influence was uncalled for. And so whether in his consent or without his consent, it is the mandate of the headmaster to oversee to the safety of the students in that school. And so what happened was that the Ghana Education Service Director General um, wrote a letter, or as it were, directed his regional directors to make sure that um, these things do not continue to happen. However, with the case with the Tempani Senior High School, there was a direct direction to the Upper East Regional Director of Education to make sure that the headmaster hands over and also give a report to the Upper East um, Regional Director of Education what really transpired so that the final decision will be made at the um, Ghana Education so Service Headquarters. Absolutely. Uh, being set aside is not necessarily an absolute one. Absolutely. Uh, because he's been having some interactions and saying that um, he, he, he was not in office at the time, he was not on the premises at the time. That is what I'm saying. That, that is what I'm saying that whether in your consent or without your consent, you cannot exculpate yourself from liability just on the principle or the basis that you were not in school. That is why you have assistant headmasters. That is why you have um, uh, housemasters and you have teachers in the school. All these 
people who are supposed to be there. There cannot be any single time that you will say that there is no teacher in the school. That is why we have teachers Bangalore, we have assistant head teachers who are supposed to be there. And it is your sole responsibility to make sure that the safety of our kids are protected. At what point then do we have to set these double standards in such a way? You're, at one point you're, you're making sure that you interact with the senior high schools, um, telling them that um, they are rest assured, free SHS has come to stay, they will be sorted out and catered for adequately. And then at some point the opposition is not supposed to interact with these young people. It presupposes that, well, you may be in government and be telling them about um, efforts being made to improve their lots, but that's also in a way trying to impact them with um, how good you are, have been in office, etc. Uh, there, there, there are always ways to get this thing done. Children or students cannot be in school for the whole year, the whole 365 days. So that is why it is the responsibility of the National Commission for Civic Education to run a lot of campaign and adverts so that if the child is in the house, if the child um, is not in school, is on vacation, there are a lot of avenues for, uh, for it or for these things to be done. It cannot or you cannot say that this thing will have to be done only when they are in school because they are in school for a particular purpose and that purpose is for them to have academic um, inculcation and uh, make sure that extra or co-curricular extra activities um, in the particular schools have been adhered to and so it is supposed to be done minus political indoctrination minus religious indoctrination at that level. You are not saying that the headmaster is political in any way, he's NDC so to speak. And so we are yeah. not saying that. Okay. We are saying that it is his responsibility to make sure that the safety of the children um, is being adhered to because when the parents of Tempani Senior High School were sending their kids to Tempani Senior High School safe. So if I have been able to bring up my child from um, age zero to 14, 15 years, where the child has been um, socialized in the manner that I want. And you think that because he came to Timpani Senior High School, he will have to be indoctrinated as against or at variance with what he has been taught in school or he has been taught in the house. And that is what we are saying that it is wrong. They are supposed to have their independent time that they are politically matured, they are mature to make their own decision, then they can do whatever they want. They cannot be forced through duress or under undue influence to, as it were, make decisions that they are not ready to make. Okay, on one hand, and make sure that um, you crack the whip, but also enforce your regulations uh, within the purview of the personnel that uh, operate within the field that you supervise. Uh, but uh, have you been able to meet the political parties, and, and this time it's the NDC that may have uh, perhaps uh, uh, flouted the regulations in such a way? Uh, that you feel that action needs to be taken. Have you met the other political parties as well, the entire political party um, groupings? Do you intend meeting them so that you convey this message? These are things that we can look at. However, um, there are people in the SOL administration that have held positions of Minister of Education and Deputy Minister of Education. I had the opportunity to read um, a certain release or a statement from Honorable Kudetu Ablakwa in 2015 or 2016 where he had to retreat the code or the teacher codes to, as it were, create the impression that these things or political party indoctrination or party rallies are not allowed in the senior high school. So they cannot pretend not to know that these rules and regulations exist because we've had situations whereby Honorable Okuja Tawablakwa made reference to those rules and even insisted that headmasters are not supposed to be allowed to do this. And so um, it, it might be tried but maybe there's also a need for us to be able to make sure that we create the awareness uh, more for people to know. That is why throughout our release, Ministry of Education have also released a statement, Ghana Education Service have also released a statement to create the impression, to create the awareness to every Tom Dick and Harry who is a stakeholder in the education sector, especially with the senior high school, to make sure that these things does not continue. Okay, but these students, um, they are taking part in many of them the double track um, yes. system that we've rolled for their current academic year yes. and um, there was um, subsequently this uh, news that was reported uh, on some mainstream platforms mm. that some schools in northern Ghana mm. uh, had been made to stop the double track mm. um, system. Is that true? Yes I heard that too but um, let me state that that is untrue. Um, when we were about starting a double track, you remember I even had an interview with you and we made mention of the fact that 
we are going to use 400 schools out of the 669 schools on the double track system. That was um, the anticipation that those schools are oversubscribed and these are schools that normally every child would want to go to um, out of the 669. So the 269 were supposed to be on a straight single track or if you like a strict semester basis but the 400 were supposed to be on double track however the double track will have to be sustained and implemented if and only if the numbers in those particular schools go up so if the number in Tatali their facility is about thousand meanwhile there's a number of students who chose Tatali and got Tatali uh, get about 400 so it means that you cannot have double track in that school because the facility there can take thousands so if you have 400 students it is going to be unconscionable to say that you're going to have double track in that school and so that is the reason why there is that um, conversion from um, double track to single track in, in that in some Even of the schools initially they were stipulated to have, have double track double and track. but that's the reason so but it, apart it, from it that it depends on the intake uh, yes or but apart from that even Bogatanga Technical High School they were part of the 269 they were supposed to have single track okay. and so if you check Bogatanga Senior High School you realize that the number of students that were anticipated based on the record from 2010 to be able to go to Bogatanga Senior High School surprisingly really went up and so for such a school that's supposed to have single you track have to rope them in. Into, make a double track because the numbers have really gone up. So, so that, that is so the that reason. The students can be accommodated. Absolutely, absolutely. But we also noticed that at the beginning of um, the academic year, uh, with the new intake, some of the schools, I think few of them, perhaps you tell us the number, have uh, done a, a makeshift of the double track system in which uh, they're having sciences, they're having maybe business all coming on one track and the rest going on the other track. Yeah. How many of such schools did you approve? Well, that is a, a few lapses that came with the system. And so let me even use this opportunity to um, commend stakeholders of the double track headmasters, teachers, and what have you, they have done marvelously so well just to fill in the few gaps that the double track system came with. Because a case in point is the Wesley Girls Senior High School, where the headmistress and administration felt that. Because, for example, general science will have biology students, home economics will have biology students. Why don't we group these students together in one track, even though the Ministry of Education or the Ghana Education Service posted to them that this particular child is supposed to be on green track or this particular child is supposed to be on gold track and that is not going to make the administration of the school a very coherent one. So in their own way they found a way to massage the system to suit their system and that is allowed and the Ghana Education Service had to stamp it for them that it was a very good decision that they made. So the massage was there, they had to also make sure that they mix it to suit their own system and so we commend them for such a human job so it is also allowed so they suggested and then they got the approval absolutely the, absolutely absolutely uh, how many of our schools are, are, are doing this uh, um, implementation of the makeshift you know quite a number to... of them but i will not be able to give you the, the figures now but yes. wesley girls yeah, I, I witnessed it myself absolutely they were admitting general science yes. and home economics yes. and they said the business and yes the rest can also be on a different track. track yeah okay but so far what has been the assessment you've been getting from the headmasters etc it started with just some few challenges but going forward with the engagement that our response team was having with the various headmasters over the weekend if you ask any headmaster in takradi or let me see western region they will tell you that there was a robust engagement with the headmaster the challenges that come with the double track um, if if it's infrastructure challenges if it's um, challenges that we think that it comes with the system itself being calendar or whatever these are things that we are dealing so much with i had the opportunity to listen to some headmasters who told us about the fact that why have we not been able to give clear cut um, dates to the double track and i told them that this is simple because we said that um, each track is supposed to have 41 days and it's one days respectively so if you start on the 11th of september you should know that 41 days later you're supposed to vacate and so Ghana education service there this week will communicate formally to the headmasters to know when they are going to have their mid -term, they are going to have their vacations and they are going to have their exams and what have you and so everything is going on well especially with the time they have to vacate absolutely Absolutely. But uh, I, I, I also did some a bit of um, some, some work. work. Yeah, uh, I did, did some, some interaction with some of the teachers. Mm -hmm. And they expressed concern about um, the allowances being paid them. How, how much is being paid each, each pupil for the teachers? Well, uh, 
I heard, I heard they were supposed to be paid about 50 Ghana cities per, per, per student. student. Um, yes, but um, and, and that have be not been among only the teachers or the entire. That is what I'm told, but um, it has not been formally communicated. I think that there are still some plans and policy guidelines that will come with it. So let's not really go deep into it at the right time or the appropriate time. It will come out so clearly to tell them. And that's our educational conversation. Roland Walker in that interaction with the PRO of the Ministry of Education, Vincent Eko Asifua there. There will be more of that. But